Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and I'm an INFJ, personality type. And I've come to notice, because I'm introverted, intuitive, feeling and judging, I am an introvert because I value the inner world over the outer world. I'm an intuitive because I value my imagination over my concrete experiences in front of me. I'm a feeler because I value, I find feeling, feelings, personal perspectives, personal viewpoints, who you are to be more important than what you do, your actions, and uh, how good you are at something, or how well you do it, or how intelligent you are. I'm a judger because I value planning and the goals over adaptation and changes. I feel more relaxed, more confident when I can maintain a plan and a steady pace forward without interruptions. Now, a lot of people out there believe they are INFJs. And how do you manage all the mistypes? How do you understand that? How do you deal with the mistypes of the INFJs? Well, what I've come to realize is that an INFJ is not an identity. Being an INFJ is not who you are right now. Being an INFJ is who you are at your best, at your ideal. And a lot of Myers-Briggs tests fail at this because they're asking you about your current state. They're asking you what you're currently doing in your current situation. And I believe a lot of people out there that feel misunderstood, alienated from other people at work, in, re in relationships, believe they are INFJs. The Myers-Briggs tests are biased to type people that have had bad experiences with manipulation and psychopaths to be INFJs. But it's not how it really is, you know. It's not your experiences that made you an INFJ. You're an INFJ is just who you are at your best. If you are in flow, if you find your flow, and if you find yourself turning into this kind of a writer, storyteller, philosopher, then you recognize that you're an INFJ for real. But if you find yourself instead breaking out of your INFJ box and turning into an actor or turning into a storyteller, a passionate, charismatic speaker, if you instead look at and take control of yourself and realize that you are more about finding out what is truth, what is your truth, what is the people's truth, what are our people's beliefs, what is humanity, why do humans do what they do, you know, then you come from the perspective of the INFP personality type. And if you're perhaps a seeker, if you're a planner and strategist, you come more from the perspective of uh, wanting to work hard towards an ambition or towards some strong goal you have in mind, and uh, more from the perspective of seeking intelligence, knowledge, and to solve puzzles and to understand the complex reality around you, then perhaps you should investigate the INTJ personality type as you. Now, the goal of this video is to help you walk through your own personal experiences of being an INFJ and to think for a second if there is a perspective or a viewpoint here or something in your development that has confused you to think you are an INFJ. And to instead identify and focus on your ideal, you know, who you are when you are self-actualized. And I want you to imagine yourself right now at the best version of yourself. What do you see yourself doing when you are your best, when you are truly in touch with yourself? What do you do when you're relaxed? What do you do when you can relax around other people and express yourself freely? What can you do when you can speak your mind and share your opinions without feeling reserved or shy or inhibited in any way? What can you do when you feel truly confident in yourself and your ability? What can you do when you allow yourself to have hope and optimism, to believe in your ideas and to not dismiss them as crazy? What will you be if you can honor your feelings or your values and truly express what you think is important, what you think is right and wrong? and what you want to do, what you believe is the best course of action. What will you do when you stop acting to avoid a negative outcome or to hide or to avoid being judged by other people? What will happen when you avoid that uh, bitter realism, that anxiety, that worry about the future, that doubt about yourself? What can you do when you can free yourself from all of that? Flow comes from freeing yourself from all of that. But flow may not take the form you do, or you think it will. 
You might think it will turn you into an INFJ, you might think that you are going to become an INFJ, but you might find yourself instead going in another direction. Now if you go in the direction of an INFP, what you will notice is you instead take on the qualities of an, an advisor, not a leader. You take on the qualities of a catalyst, not of a visionary. You take on the qualities of a reporter, not a diplomat. You become a voice of truth. You start becoming the voice of truth of the people. You put terms and words and definitions and experiences. You show people what is true and what is false. You show people what is good and what is bad. INFPs are the reporters of society, the true reporters, the ones that can truly see through and into another person and can help them understand their experiences and what they feel and what is right and wrong. INFPs are catalysts. They come from the perspective of change. They come from the perspective of what's going to happen next and how do I alter this situation? How do I change the situation for the better? INFPs come from the perspective of juggling, throwing something at someone and then having them throw something back to you. You know, being able to pick things up, being able to make changes and additions. Well, if we go there, if you want to go there, then we should also take a stop there. If you want to do this, then we should also do that. You know, the ability to become a catalyst and to put terms on change, to be able to define change and say, so we should go there, so we should do that, and we should go in this direction. Now, INFJs, as an INFJ, I come from the perspective of vision. And vision is this, like, idea of an uninterrupted flow. It's this idea of the clear path in the forest you know it's the idea of this path you can take that will be so much easier than all other paths it's this idea of this clearing in the forest that you can pass through and there won't be anything in the way there won't be any obstacles and you'll be able to clear out this path and you'll be able to find a better way to do things you'll be able to find a new way to do things you'll be able to find an original way to do things you'll think of a solution or some way to do something that will be better than the old ways, the ways we used to do things. You'll find your own way of doing things. It might not be better than anyone else's way, but it will be your way, your path, the easiest way forward for you, the natural way forward for you, the way that you see things, the way that is true to your own vision and to your own eyes and to where you feel pulled. It's like a pull, you know, it's pulling you forward. and. You don't necessarily want to, the more changes come up, the more interruptions, the more blocks in the way, the more you feel it's not your path, you know, the more interruptions that come up, the easier as an NJ to feel, oh, so this is not my path, you know, a path should feel like a steady way forward. And if you should be able to be confident in that, and it should give you confidence, it should like feel effortless to walk on this path. It should feel like it's uh, meant for you. This path was made for you. Um, if it's not, or if, it's, uh, if you find yourself constantly making changes and taking new turns and twists and constantly going in that direction and then in that direction, then perhaps you should be looking at the intuitive perceiving type. INFJs are not... ENFJs. You know, ENFJs, they don't come from a position of empathy. They come from a position of compassion. And both are healing. Both are healing powers. You know, both heal. Compassion heals just as well as empathy. Empathy is setting yourself in another person's perspective. You know, seeing another person's perspective and viewpoint. Understanding, pinpointing their intentions. Why they do what they do. Compassion is defining what another person is doing what they are saying, who they are, if they are good or bad in doing this. And it is being able to transform another person's situation to say, you should do that, you should change this, you should stop doing that. You shouldn't be rude to that person, you should be nice, you shouldn't be that way, you should be that way. You know, the transformation in compassion. Compassion is about transformation of people's experiences. It's about affection, genuine care for other people. And affection is often misunderstood as sensitivity. You know, a lot of people say INFJs and INFPs are sensitive types. But ENFJs and ENFPs are also sensitive in the sense that they are affectionate. You know, as an INFJ, I have deep sensitive experiences, deep emotional inner experiences inside of me. But I don't often share that with other people, you know. 
It's very hard for me to do that and to open up to other people. ENFJs and ENFPs, they have very strong emotions and emotional reactions to things. They take like life and death very seriously. They take hurting and harming animals very seriously. They feel very bad in observing other people's struggles. and They can get very caught up in seeing suffering around them. And they can take that outwardly, express that outwardly to say, you shouldn't be struggling like that. You shouldn't be suffering like that. Why do you have to suffer like that? Why do people have to have this experience? They will get affectionate, emotionally invested in the situation. Where an INFJ or an INFP will keep their distance. We will feel that it is bad and we will want to do something about it. But we will struggle to enter into that person's situation and to do something in their life. We feel, to some extent... Like we are watching it from a distance, what like watching a movie or watching something that's happening away from us. And we understand it and we think about it and we see the bigger picture. We try to provide insight and we try to provide emotional input and guidance. But we don't try to insert ourselves into the other's experience or to help them in a direct sense of the word. INFJs come from the perspective of kindness, not from truth. You know, this is very important. You know, as an ENFP, truth is very important to you. You know, ISFPs and ISFJ, uh, I mean, ESFPs and INFPs, they come from the perspective of what is true and what is false. You know, INFJs, we come from the perspective of what is kind, what is the good thing to do, what would a good person do in this situation. As an INFJ, I can see how I can be a good influence to other people and I will want to help other people and I will want to guide and I will want to steer other people in the right direction. A lot of what I do is about doing and having a positive impact on other people. That's a genuine value to me. It gives me a sense of pride. It really is what gives me pride in who I am and what I do. For an INFP or an ENFP, the pride comes from telling the truth, you know, from being true to your own story, to sharing and saying, this is what I believe, and to standing up for your beliefs, to be authentic, to be real with other people, to tell them when you see that they're doing something bad, to be honest with them in the sense that when you notice that they are uh, doing something and you believe as an ENFP and INFP that your words will help if you can tell them the truth if you can help them understand it, if you can put words on it, and if you can put it out there in the open, you can make the world a better place and you can feel proud because you were the one that said something. You were the one that stood up for truth. As an INFJ, kindness is a little different. Of course, I value truth, you know. Of course, I'm also a feeling type. So I still see a value in bringing up experience and helping people experience things and helping people understand, you know. But for me, it's often about what... And how to phrase truth kindly. How do I express this in a way that will help other people? And if I don't think it will help other people, I won't say it, you know. I won't say things if I have any doubt that it will harm them or put them in a bad situation. So I will often think about truth. Is this the right thing to say right now? When should I say it? When is it the right time to say it, you know? And I will think about how to say it. How do I tell this person this, you know? And that's often the perspective of feeling judging. That's guiding and managing truth, you know, managing how things are done, managing how people experience things and helping them understand something, you know, helping them understand it in a way that they can deal with it, you know, helping them understand their truth and to make peace with it. That's also very important for me as an INFJ. And in a tense sense, when they are struggling, to go in there and to want to do something for them. What can I do for you now that you're going through this? Is there anything I can do for you that's very important for me as an INFJ? It's also the question of uh, insight. You know, insight is very different from transformation. I pursue insight. I, I believe there is like a deeper truth behind everything, a kind of root, like a real way everything works according to this real natural law like if i can just dig deep enough i can find this natural law where everything is leading in of gays in of peace they have this question of transformation which is like what can this become you know what is behind the next door you know uh even if the metaphor of extra intuition is this room this this place full of doors there's that door that door that door and that door where does that lead where does that lead you know there's like pulling a string and seeing where it leads for an introvert intuitive it's a question of digging okay so what's underneath this what's under this where where is this leading you know what this 
everything leading up to? Where is everything leading up to? There's an idea that everything is leading to some point, some fixed point inside. If everything else is scaled back, it's like peeling off layers of an onion. If I peel away all the layers, what is the root? What is the core? They the belief that there is a core is very fundamental to the introvert intuitive. Where for an extrovert intuitive, it's like things are always leading somewhere. There's like an infinite string that you can keep on pulling and there will always be more things to uncover and more to discover and more doors to open. And that's also why it's kind of an eternal process. <laughs> and um, for me, it's a question of uh, finding truth. For them, it's a question of making a discovery. And uh, looking at everything together, you know, you have to understand that the INFJ is a leader. A leader is somebody that comes from the inside and comes from the perspective of uh, goals. There is like this, uh, there is this things everything is leading up to. There is this idea of this moment that everything is leading up to this path that I'm following this way that I'm going towards. There is this idea that everything is leading somewhere and should be leading somewhere. And if it's not leading anywhere, then it's very bad. <laughs> then it's very, very bad. It has to always lead somewhere. Uh, there always has to be a way. And uh, ideally, this way is very important. This is very important to follow this way, to follow this path, you know. In times in my life where I've been asked uh, to change my path I've almost always chosen to keep at my path I haven't always been able to define where I'm going it's very hard for me to put words or terms on what I'm doing where I'm going and where I'm headed with things you know but I always feel like I'm going somewhere and that's very important to my experience and uh, it's very important for me to Theorize, you know, theory is so important for me. Theory as in why can I understand something theoretically, you know? I care honestly more about that theory than about the discovery. I care more about formulating a theory than proving it in the world around me, going out, testing it, seeing how it works. You know, I'm not going out there. I'm not going, doing interviews. I'm not making studies. I'm not doing research. You know, I'm not sitting there and asking questions and reading and studying up in different literature and going out and interviewing researchers. Research is not a priority for me because I'm not an explorer. You know, explorers, extroverted perceiving types, they love, they get a kick out of research, you know, doing research, finding out new things. Oh, so that's what that person thinks. Oh, so that's what you, that article says, you know, that ability to get new research on various matters and to learn more new things about it. You know, explorers, they love to go on a research project and to get as much information as possible. Leaders, we're like, how do I use this research? How do I put it all together? Okay, there are all those ideas. How do I put it all together? You know, how do I package this? As a leader, you think about how you take everything in the world and how you give it direction, how you organize it, how you drive it forward, what you do with it. It's the question of uh, thinking in the way that you want to put it together. You want to package things. You know, ISTJs, they love to build things. I like to make concepts for things. I like to... Uh, come up with uh, like these comprehensive models and theories for things. Um, I'm sitting and making tables, trying to organize and understand psychological terms and their various ideas. And then I do research to back that up and to get the information necessary. But I'm always packaging things. I'm always putting things together. I'm not taking them out there. I'm not taking them apart. I'm not questioning the ideas. I'm not an advisor. I'm not an INFP. I'm not going in there and questioning everything and going, so can you really do it that way? Does that really work? Can you really do it, use that term in that way? Does everyone understand this correctly? You know, I'm not coming from that perspective and uh, I'm not coming from the perspective of an executive or a manager either. You know, recognizing all of this, you know, really digging into your personality type is digging into what makes you happy. What really makes you happy? What does it, what does it really mean for you to be happy? What are you doing when you're happy? If 
if you're an ENFJ when you're happy, if you're an INFP when you're happy, if you're an ENFP when you're happy, then you should really be investigating that in yourself. Maybe there are things you can do in your life that will get you out of your uh, current rut. Maybe it will help you out of this feeling of alienation. Uh, maybe it will help you out of this experience of feeling isolated from other people. Finding flow and recognizing you're not an INFJ at flow and understanding that you're an INFJ right now, consider what experiences made you think you were an INFJ. Sometimes people think being an INFJ is being a seeker, searching for something, but never feeling fulfilled. But being an INFJ feels fulfilling to me. Sometimes people think being an INFJ is like being some kind of muse. People think being an INFJ is like, uh, you know, being hidden, a secret creature, living away from everyone else and uh, careful to interject themselves into anything, careful to influence the world in any way but mindful and true and full of insight and wisdom. But an INFJ is a hero, you know, an INFJ is acting on their own awareness. They're doing and making decisions and plans and they're executing plans based on their visions and based on their ideas and based on their insight. We are taking a path forward. We're not in hiding. Being an INFJ is not being a giver. It's not about being a healer. It's not about, you know, nurturing other people and forgetting yourself and being manipulated by other people or being used. It's not about forgetting to set boundaries and becoming so focused on other people's experiences that you ignore your own. You know, being an INFJ is being in control of another person and of people and of the people around you and having an influence over others and having a position where you can manage and show people a path forward, where you can tell people a story where you can give people a sense of vision, a sense of um, yearning, you know, where you can give people something to work towards, something to strive towards. INFJs don't passively listen and observe and empathize. We also tell stories. We also give direction. We also give vision. The descriptions and the personality tests online give the idea that INFJs are deeply damaged or wounded people feeling misunderstood, often having histories of being manipulated by psychopaths, being used, being controlled by others, feeling depressed, feeling lonely, feeling alienated. But anyone can have these experiences. And we are taking away from the ability for other people of other personality types to have those experiences. We are forgetting that feeling misunderstood is a human experience and we are cutting ourselves off from being able to relate to other personality types from being able to value other personality types, from being able to see other personality types' true possibilities and powers, and from forgetting to respect and to understand other people's skills and gifts. We are creating the idea of an INFJ as a Jesus or a Messiah, and we are also inhibiting and forcing fake ideals on ourselves that make us feel weak and make us feel insecure and make us feel smaller than we are. And we need to break out of the box. And perhaps to you that will mean realizing you're not an INFJ. Or perhaps that will show you where you need to go to find greater flow. And when you discover that you're an INFJ, when you find your story to, that you want to share with other people, when you find your vision that you want to walk towards, when you find the courage to lead, that will make you feel happy. The goal of personality psychology must be to spread happiness and self-awareness and insight. If it doesn't, it has no purpose and you shouldn't be using it at all. Those are my thoughts on INFJs. Hopefully this video helped you. And if it did, feel free to share it with other people that you think will help them. Leave a like or leave a comment or share this video or support me on my Patreon patreon.com slash ericdor. Thank you all for being here and thank you for supporting me in my project. See you all in the next video.